Hey, namaste everyone. Welcome to the circle. Hi, Amy. Hi to everyone else that is getting signed in. Everyone that is catching the replay as well as I predict most people will be catching the replay or tuning into the replay just because it is Christmas Eve Eve and <laughs> the day before Christmas Eve. It is a holiday weekend. It's a Friday. We're in a big snowstorm, ice storm, winter storm. Most of the country is in a storm. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on for the holidays. So if you are spending your time with me, welcome in. I do appreciate and value your time. I will try to keep this circle as close to an hour as possible tonight. We're not going to do um, some longer practices or anything. It's pretty much going to be short and sweet. We'll welcome back in our guides and guardians. We'll talk about the five elements in our circle. We'll definitely do a tarot reading. I'm going to talk about many other things tonight, including our Capricorn moon, talking a little bit about the new moon being in Capricorn and what that's all about. We'll also talk about the moon being in Mula Nakshatra in Vedic astrology. And I'll share a quick little manifesting tool or tip or practice with you tonight to help kickstart your manifestation journey for your 2023, your year to come. I'm sure you're already starting to think about that, but if you haven't, you should, and I'll tell you why tonight. Before we officially get started, let's take three deep breaths together. I always like to start with deep breaths. So whenever you're ready, sit up tall, find your posture, you know, really ground in, find lots and lots of room for your breath. Deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth when you're ready. It's like a sigh to shake out your body, shake out any tension, ground in, clear your mind if you need to. And let's take another deep breath in out with maybe some sound this time, <sighs> just vibrating the vocal cords, again, moving out any stuck energy, and maybe this final time, if it's safe for you to do so, you can inhale, reach your arms overhead, big stretch, exhale, bring hands to heart, <sighs> and then just release your arms, shake off the body, ground into this moon circle, I'm going to itch my nose for a moment. The air is very dry right now here, and my nose is itchy from blowing it so much. You can even see on the video, I've got like red nose right now. I've got a little Rudolph nose because I've been blowing my nose a lot the past couple of days with it being so cold, and I have had to go in and out, including today a little bit. So pardon the itchy nose, but I am here. I am happy to be with you, and I'm excited to talk all about this new moon in Capricorn. And this is our last new moon of 2022. So a big one to tune into. You definitely want to tune into the energy when you can. Most people have more downtime over this weekend because it is the holiday weekend. So, you know, make sure you balance out all of that socializing time, all that time with friends and family and celebrating the holidays with a little bit of personal time, a little time to check in with your energy, check in with the moon, check in with the astrology, kind of what's going on right now and take a little time for yourself too, okay? So let's begin first by bringing in the five elements. I'm gesturing over here because they're over here over to my side. We always bring in the five elements into my circle because we're dealing with the Earth's moon. This moon is relative to our planet and no other, so we need to bring in the magic of this planet. Now, if you don't have these elements or these particular elements I'm bringing in, it's okay. You can bring in your own elements intuitively, or you can simply absorb the energy from this transmission. We are connecting digitally, and when we do that, we move beyond the veil of dimension. So I'm moving beyond space right now. It's as if I'm sitting with you in the same space as you, um, be on this screen and also we're moving beyond time. I mentioned many people will be tuning into the replay of this transmission, but you're still going to receive the energy of these elements. So it's a pretty radical place to be connecting. It's one of my favorite places to do these moon circles and my goodness, 
<laughs> I'm just realizing that I haven't even introduced myself. If this is your first time tuning in to me, I will say welcome. My name is Vina Lene Rachel. I am a moon priestess, an intuitive, an emotional alchemist, and a channeler of the divine. I host these moon circles every new moon and full moon. For now, we're hosting on Instagram. They're always for free. I just give you time to learn about the moon, learn about whatever zodiac sign is influencing the energy right now, maybe other cosmic shifts and alignments going on. I bring in the Vedic astrology. We typically do some sort of card reading, usually a tarot reading. And then I sh usually share some sort of like practical magic or some sort of uh, you know spiritual or magic practice that you can do in the, the lunar portal, whether it be the new moon or the full moon. So if this is your first time tuning in, I welcome you. And of course, I welcome you no matter what time this is for you to tune in because I've been doing these circles for a while and I, you know, have connected with a lot of people along the way. So welcome to the circle. Let's bring in the elements, starting with the earth element. And I always like to start with a little bit of uh, crystal magic or crystal healing. And tonight I'm going to suggest first off that you just work with maybe egg shaped stones. Okay. Because eggs represent new beginnings. And this is the last new moon of the year, but this starts a new lunar cycle. And this lunar cycle will carry us over into the new year. So we want to set intentions, plant seeds, you know, plant little, little egg dreams in, um, you know, representation of what we want to see blossom or hatch or bloom in the next year. So anything egg shaped would be useful for you. This is a rainbow moonstone. You could certainly use any type of moonstone with the new moon. I would also suggest maybe working with stones that are black and white representing winter. This moon is arriving two days into the season of winter. We just had winter solstice back on the 21st. Sorry, I have a little bit of a scratchy throat right now. <clears throat> but anything representing winter, so like snow, right? White crystals or white and black, contrasting that shadow of light and dark, sun and moon. And then also you could use snowflake obsidian. So snowflake obsidian is kind of this black and white or gray and black stone. Obsidian is really good for repelling any negative energy. And there can be a lot of negative energy during the holiday season. You know, we try to cover it up with the glitz and the glamour and the cheer and the joy. But a lot of people are stressed right now because they're spending more uh, money than they want to or they're feeling really taxed financially. People are stressed because they're, you know, out and about and having to wait in longer lines, you know, cashiers and people in emergency uh, service, people that are in travel industry, they're all taxed right now because they're dealing with a lot of grumpy people and weather. I mean, there's a lot of negative energy that can happen right now. So you want to make sure that you're protected from that. Obsidian is really good for that. Snowflake obsidian is really nice to use during the winter season or during the Capricorn season. There's also this nice contrast again of black and white. Now moving beyond crystals, a little bit of practical magic. You don't have to use crystals or gemstones. You can use things from nature for the earth element. I would suggest that you use maybe pine cones right now or perhaps acorns that you found fallen on the ground. Anything that's kind of fallen on the ground from the trees, pine needles um, in addition to the pine cones. Pine is a very healing tree and you know, having these little pine cones are a great representation of the seedlings of your dreams again. But you could certainly do some sort of flower bulb or seed as well and bring that into your circle. Speaking of pine, I'm also bringing in this nice, huge pine smudge that a dear friend got for me. And it's clearly going to last me a long time. I don't use it for every circle. I only use it for some. But right now, you know, using the energy of evergreens because we're in this season of winter and it's a time when we have the Christmas trees around. So bringing in pine, pine sage or pine smudge might be a great way to 
also introduce earth medicine into your spaces. So, <clears throat> sorry, goodness, guys. I have an abalone shell. We're in the energy of Capricorn. This moon is in Capricorn, the sign of the cosmic mermaid or merman. So I have a little abalone shell to, to hold my uh, smudging stick or catch my ashes and whatnot. I'm going to combine this with our next element, the element of fire. And when that happens, we're going to get our third element which you're already starting to see, the element of smoke or wind. So I like to really light up my smudging sticks until they themselves are on fire, just to really make sure that fire combines and that smoke gets going. And then we're just gonna let that burn. So I'm gonna take that around me in a counterclockwise direction to release. Same with you and the tools that I'm using to transmute to you. Just clear out all of that with the smoke, sacred smoke. And then it's kind of nice to watch where the smoke blows. Now I have the heat blowing right now and the window is open. By the way, you should always have some sort of window or door crack to let the smoke out when you're smudging. But it's nice to see where the smoke goes. This smoke is burning out pretty quickly and it's traveling to the window pretty quickly which is telling me that we don't need a lot of smudging right now, that we're pretty clear, and whatever we need to release is being taken away very swiftly, very quickly, which is good because that means we're ushering it out, it's moving away with ease, don't have to worry about it anymore. This is pretty much gone. I'm gonna let it set here in the shell in case there's any residual smoke, but it's looking I'm putting it up to the light right now to check and I'm not seeing any smoke. So I think that's already burned out and you saw it caught on fire a couple of times. It was burning. So smudging accomplished sacred smoke, third element of wind. We've brought that in. We go on to the fourth element, water. I always suggest that you have water. You should always be consuming more water during a new moon and during a full moon to flush your energy, to move anything that's stuck through. Also, this is a Capricorn moon. Capricorn being the sign of the mermaid, the merman, or the cosmic sea goat, whatever that means. But it's this combination of water and land. And sometimes that can create mud or a muddy, mucky, stuck energy. So if you're feeling stuck in your energy, if you're feeling unmotivated, if you're feeling lethargic, if you just don't even want to move your body, if you don't want to be creative, drink water because combining that water with your internal systems will automatically move things through. So I'm going to wet my whistle, my throat chakra with this water right now, just to prepare for more in our circle. And again, this water is a very practical magic for you. You don't have to have anything other than that to bring in the element of water into your circle. So you can bring in, again, earth elements like little seedlings or pine, pine needles. You can also burn those for smudge and smoke, pine cones, or maybe for your wind, you're using your voice or you're using your breath. <sighs> those deep breaths, that's wind. That's your wind element for your circle as well. Now, if you want to go deeper with your water element, you can definitely bring in essential oils. I also like to use aromatherapy during my circles because it combines all of the elements. It combines your earth element. These come from plants, from the earth. It combines your um, fire element because they're collected through steam distillation. It combines, and also the photosynthesis of the plant, but steam distillation heat, and it combines the element of air or wind because you inhale these, you combine it with your olfactory system, you breathe it in. So I would suggest first starting with a very popular oil right now this time of year, frankincense. Frankincense tends to be used as a Christmas oil. Supposedly, uh, frankincense was brought to the birth of Jesus, right, by the wise men. 
Frankincense is the oil of the father as well. It provides a, a very fathering, protective energy, and it also helps you deal with Capricorn energy. Capricorn is ruled by the planet of Saturn. Saturn is kind of known as Big Daddy Planet Saturn, the planet of karma, the planet of life lessons and things coming down hard, high school principal planet as well. So if you need a little structure in your life right now, if you need kind of that hard hammer to come down on yourself, maybe you gently do it by just using more frankincense in your life. You could simply breathe this in. You could put it into your diffuser. You could roll it directly on your body if it's a roller, or you could dilute it with some sort of carrier oil. It is a very gentle oil, and you can use it neat. You can use it undiluted, but it's very expensive. So if you want to save money with your oils, I highly suggest using a carrier oil with all of your oils, including frankincense. The carrier your oil also helps the oil to stay topically on your body longer so you'll have more absorb into your body and not out into the air you know these are highly aromatic compounds so take advantage as much as you can and get them into your system versus floating out in the air. However, frankincense is great just to breathe in. If it's in the air, it's going to help boost your mood. It provides a little bit of equilibrium. It helps to balance your emotions, your mood. It can balance your frequency and it can help you if you're feeling a little down right now. I like to use this during Christmas time because I don't have my father around anymore and I really miss him during the holidays so I'm probably going to use frankincense in my um, weekend just to help me feel more loved and supported with that fathering energy. Now you could also work with Arbor Vitae Arbor Vitae, V-I-T-A-E, Arbor, V-I-T-A-E. This is the tree of life oil. This is a great oil to help you ground into new beginnings. It helps you build new roots. Now, we are also in Mula Nakshatra in Vedic astrology. The moon is in the root star or foundational star. So using any oils that come from roots would be great, but also this tree of life oil, this Arbor Vitae oil can really help you to ground in to new habits, new shifts, new intentions, anything that you're trying to build a new foundation for in your future or in this next year. I don't have it with me. It's just downstairs in my cabinet, but Douglas fir is another great oil to be using right now. Douglas fir is the Christmas tree oil. Most Christmas trees are of Douglas fir variety. So if you're looking for that Christmas tree smell, you could throw a couple of drops into your diffuser. Weirdly, I can diffuse Douglas fir and these Siberian fur, white fur, balsam fur. I can diffuse the furs, but I'm allergic to Christmas trees. <laughs> so if I go in a place with a real Christmas tree, I'm going to have the runny noses and the sneezes. And that's probably why my nose has been running more than normal as well. But yes, Douglas fur is another great oil to use, not only because it's the Christmas tree oil, but because it is the oil of generational wisdom. This is a time of family get-togethers, maybe sharing stories about family members that have passed, maybe looking for the wisdom in the family members and you know what they have to offer. But this is a time to look to our family and look to our ancestors and look to the wisdom they gave us, you know, over the mistakes or judgments, because sometimes we can talk about that stuff too. This is about finding more grace and love and gratitude for our ancestors. And so Douglas fir can help you see the light in your ancestors and in your family members and the people that you love and relate to. So highly suggest working with Douglas fir if you're looking for generational love, light, wisdom, and also if you're working to heal any ancestral karma right now because this moon is in Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, the planet of karma, 
and life lessons. So if you're trying to heal some sort of ancestral karma, you want to look into using Douglas fir. You can diffuse it. I wouldn't suggest using it topically. I'd probably just go with diffusing it or breathing it from the bottle or maybe you have some sort of ornament and you put it on that. You can use wooden clothespins, by the way, or felt balls and put a little bit of essential oil on there for a really easy, cheap diffuser. You'll have to keep refreshing it, but it does the job. So maybe you throw some Douglas fir on some clothespins and put it around your house to freshen things up and help your family and your loved ones see the light in the ancestors in their lives as well. So maybe it's friends, maybe it's family. Now I'm rambling. I'm going to move on. <laughs> okay. Finally, the fifth element, I already mentioned it. It's the ether. It's this place that we're already connecting to, the digital space, whether you're tuning into my live transmission right now on Instagram, maybe you're watching the replay video on YouTube or on my website, maybe you are listening to the audio replay on my podcast, wherever you're tuning into this transmission, it's as if you are live with me right now. You are receiving the magic of all of these elements I've just introduced introduced to you and anything else that comes. And the great thing about the ether, not only moving beyond space and time, it also enhances any energies the more and more people tune into it. So down the road, more and more people will listen or watch this transmission and the energy will only grow stronger. And I encourage you to maybe, you know, test it out try it sometime. Maybe you've been tuning into my moon circles for a long time. Maybe you tuned into last month's new moon circle in Sagittarius. Maybe you go back and listen to it again right now and see how the energy feels. Or maybe you go to last year's new moon in Capricorn virtual circle, check out the replay, see how the energy feels, see if it feels live course there'll be some things that are a little irrelevant the alignment will be slightly off but it will feel different than the first time that you tuned into it so we also invite in the ether as our fifth element into our circle tonight with that I am going to bring in the guides and guardians of the five directions just to enhance the energy of our circle tonight I do not have a fancy pants drum on me right now, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering, hang on, nope, that's not going to be loud enough, but I do have this box off to the side, a little practical magic, wait for it, yep, because I want to do a little drumming tonight, and drumming is earth energy as well. And I just want to do a little drumming as we welcome in our guides and guardians. And you don't have to have pro drum. You can just find something that makes that nice, beautiful drumming sound. I like that. So we're going to keep going. We start by inviting in the guides and guardians of the East element of air, new beginnings, new cycle ushering us into 2023, the air element helping us to keep our energy balanced when things are a little crazy or overstimulating. We thank the guides and guardians of the element of air and the east for being in our circle tonight. We also invite in the guides and guardians of the south, element of fire, helping us to burn away what no longer serves, helping us to smudge away the energy that needs to leave helping us to digestively process what we need to release for good. We thank the guides and guardians of the South, their element of fire for being in our circle tonight. We 
also invite in the guides and guardians of the West. Element of water. Strong with this oceanic influence of the Capricornian moon. Sign of the sea goat. Sign of the mermaid and the merman. We see so much precipitation right now. Winter storms, ice and snow for many of us. Rain for others. The water washes away what we need to purify. It ushers us into new places. It represents time. We reflect on our past, we invite in our future, and we honor the present, our true gift of the here and now. We thank the guides and guardians of the West. Element of water being in our circle tonight. We also invite in the guides and guardians of the North. Element of Earth. With this earthy Capricorn moon. Also in the Mula Nakshatra. Earth root chakra star. We invite in the wisdom of our ancestors. We also invite in their guidance and protection. We invite in the magic of the elements that we've brought into our circle tonight, the crystals, the gemstones, the pine, the cones, the smudging smoke, the fire, the water, the oils, and everything else in the ether. We thank the guides and guardians of the north and the element of earth for being in our circle tonight. And finally, we invite in the Akash, the fifth element, the spirit realm, the ether, our protectors, our angels, archangels and deities, gods and goddesses, cosmic neighbors and beings, source consciousness, source energy, source wisdom, and anything else that needs to be here. We thank the fifth element and the spirit realm for being in our circle too night. With that, our circle is officially open. Welcome to those who joined while we were drumming and inviting in everyone. Let's talk about a new moon in case this is your first time tuning into a moon circle or learning about the moon. What does it mean to be in a new moon? Well, first off, it means it's dark outside. You look outside can't see the new moon. Not really. You may see an outline, but probably not. Right now, if my earthly body was the earth and over here on one side was the sun, the moon would be on the same side in between the sun and me, the earth, and therefore blocking the sun's light. So we can't see the sun right now at night. We have no reflection of that and we're in a dark moon. This is also the beginning of the lunar cycle. So the moon travels around the earth every 29 and a half ish days. As it does so, it shifts signs every two and a half days, zodiac signs. And over the course of 29 and a half ish days, it's gonna end up back around again in a new lunar cycle. So that means it starts as this dark new moon. And here about a week from now, we'll see a half moon. And then about a week after that, we're going to see a full moon. Shortly after that, we see the moon starts to wax or get darker. There's a little crescent. Then there's a half, another little crescent, a little bit of a light, and we're back to the new moon, okay? So we know the moon affects gravity. 
It affects the tides. It affects the oceans. It's going to infect our infect. <laughs> it's going to infect. It's going to impact our internal tides, our internal waters or emotions, which are held in our sacral chakra, second energy center, which is also known as our internal moon, by the way. So this is a time when we get a little watery. New moons make us feel emotional, as do full moons. But new moons in a different way. New moons connect us to a pana energy. It's the energy at the bottom of our breath. It's the energy closer to the core of the earth. And it's an energy below our heart. So it's going to maybe make us feel tired, unmotivated, depressed, sad, like a case of the blahs. Anything a little low frequency and slower in energy. We might feel that during this dark new moon time. We might also just feel dire, tired because light is different, right? We feel more amplified during nights of full moons because that solar energy is reflecting onto us and it's energizing us. The sun energizes us. We live and operate circadian rhythms by natural sunlight. So when it's darker outside or it's dark all night long, it makes us more tired. We're also in winter now in the Northern Hemisphere and you may experience darker times, right? We're two days after winter solstice. Winter solstice is the longest night of the year, but this is kind of the second or third longest night of the year, depending how you look at it. So we're in still pretty dark times and that can bring us into those lower feelings as well. So that's what we feel during a new moon. Now, energetically, this is also a great time to both release what you don't want to carry over into this next lunar cycle. It's also a great time to set intentions, set goals, shift into new habits, new beginnings, and work with the moon. Now, of course, we're really close to the new year. We're about a week off. <clears throat> this is always a time when we, excuse me, sorry, hang on. <coughs> I feel like I finally just cleared my throat chakra. Yay, let me grab a drink of water. I was fighting some nasally things there. It went away. Whew, all right. Back in action. So where was I at? I was talking about winter. I was talking about, help me out, help me out if you're here live. It's talking about this new moon, new beginnings, setting new goals because it's a new moon. It's typically a time to set goals because it's the new year, right? However, it's always a good time to set goals with a new moon. And that's why I like working with the moon for manifestation and goal setting and habit forms, habit formation, habit form. <laughs> Mercury's about to go retrograde and I can't talk. Um, forming new habits you know, shifting my energetic exchanges, all those things, I like to do that with new moons instead of doing it just like once a year with the new year or maybe twice a year like new year and birthday. I like to do it more often. So I suggest that with this new moon, so close to the new year, that you get in the habit of right now setting new goals and shifting into new habits and gearing towards new intentions because I just mentioned this right now about a week from now on the 29th Mercury goes retrograde and it gets harder for us to be honest about what we want or express our needs and desires sometimes we physically fall ill because the throat chakra is related to wellness and it's always affected by Mercury going retro so now is the time when we're all in the holiday joy and holiday spirit, a little bit more amplified to set goals and intentions and also maybe set the intention to start working with the moon moving forward in the next year, meeting up every 29 and a half-ish days to check in with your goals and intentions and energy, etc. So I just mentioned that the moon aligns with the sun 
right, on day one of that lunar cycle, or right now, the moon, as a new moon, is aligned with the sun. This is how we know that the moon is in Capricorn, because we are currently in the solar season of Capricorn. We moved into Capricorn season with winter solstice two days ago on December 21st, and we will stay with this season until January 20th. So I mentioned the moon switches signs every two and a half ish days or so. So right now, since the moon is aligned with the sun, it's in the sign of Capricorn. Just about a day ago, it was in Sagittarius. In a couple of days, it's going to move into Aquarius. So hold on to this heavy, hardcore, intense Capricorn energy right now because it's really going to help you move forward towards your dreams. How you may ask, Capricorn is an earth sign. All earth signs are about being structured, organized, scheduled, and planned out, okay? So this right now is the portal for you to get organized. You know, do you have things that are unorganized in your life that are standing in your way of moving towards your dreams or moving towards your joy. Maybe you need to get more structured. Maybe you need to bust out a day planner or a scheduler and actually start scheduling in your day, making sure that things are more energetically balanced, okay? Capricorn energy also likes to ground in, there's that earth energy, and do the hard work. You know, it's the sign of the sea goat. And if you've ever seen a goat, they can ground in just about anywhere. So again, no excuses to wait until the new year. Ground in now with this new moon in Capricorn, with the sun in Capricorn. Ground in, okay, to what you want to do. This is a great time for you to really get a strong vision of what you want to create in 2023, how you want to take steps towards your dreams, okay? So not just dreaming about what you want or making the vision board, but actually scheduling out some actionable steps to help you get there, okay? You also have to ground into reality. Capricorn energy being earthy is very logical, Okay, and very real, it's kind of the sign of the realist. If there were, you know, Sagittarius is the cosmic optimist, I would say that cat and you know, Scorpio is kind of the cosmic pessimist sometimes. I would say, I would say Cancer is sometimes the cosmic pessimist too, but yeah, um, Capricorn, cosmic realist. So, this is a time to get real with yourself. Are you standing in your own way? If so, get out of your way, shift your habits, shift your energy. Are other people standing in your way? It's time to get real and make shifts and changes, okay? This is a time to ground in to what you want to bring into your new year. Capricorn energy is also about getting unstuck. So finding ways to Move your body if you've been a little lazy. Finding ways to get your digestive system going if it's been stuck. Finding ways to process your emotions if they've been bottled up. Finding ways to move towards your goals if you've been feeling blocked or you've self-sabotaged or something else is standing in your way. It's time to put your head down and kind of bust through those barriers and you know break through any of those personal glass ceilings or limiting things that are causing you to hold yourself back. So Capricorn kind of makes us do the hard work that normally we wouldn't want to do. So I'm not a fan of like keeping track of my finances very well. This is just a very honest thing. Um, I'm not very good with keeping up with like my business um, accounting, okay? I usually just wait until like tax time or a month or two before and just do it all at once. One of the things that I tried to do this past year was keep up with it more month to month. 
Now, I did good until July, and then in July, I traveled, and then again, I traveled in August, and then again, I traveled in September, and then again, I traveled in October, and the traveling got in the way of me staying on top of things because I write off a lot of my travel expenses, and I just have all the receipts and like the the things all logged up and piled in envelopes, and I kind of just let it go from there. So this season, Capricorn energy, and I've been feeling the itch for a while. By the way, I'm a Capricorn moon, but I've been feeling the itch to get my taxes done like now. It's rare that I have like three to four days off in a row, but because of the weather yesterday, today being a new moon, and tomorrow and Sunday being Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, I have a lot of time off from my studio or other obligations with work right now. And I'm gonna hammer in, and I'm gonna get my name taxes caught up to the best of my ability. I'm gonna try to get everything done. So all I have to do is fill in like last minute little bits and pieces and get my taxes turned in ASAP. So that's something I wouldn't normally want to do, but Capricorn energy makes me want to do that. Okay, so that's just an example, but Capricorn energy is going to make you want to do things that you normally don't want to do. Maybe you need to organize out that closet or junk drawer or office so you can get more focused on your goals towards your work and professional life. There's a lot of examples. So just kind of get yourself organized, get yourself grounded in, get ready to build a really strong foundation for 2023. Let's move over for a moment to the Eastern side of the world. Let's talk about Vedic astrology. In the Vedic side of the world, this moon is in Mula Nakshatra. Mula is Sanskrit for root or foundation. You can think like Mula Bandha in the yoga world or Mula Dahara, which is our root chakra. Mula is a time of grounding in and building your foundation. This star is actually found at the center of our galaxy as well. So this is kind of the foundation of whatever earth or universe or world that we're ready to co-create or build upon. We're at the root of it right now. There's also, you know, a black hole, really, like at the center of our galaxy, at the center of our universe. So black holes represent this unknown. Everything gets sucked into it, but we don't know what's on the other side. And we're kind of in this black hole right now. We're getting sucked out of 2022 into 2023. We don't really know what's happening right now. So we need to build on the foundation of our energy as much as possible. We need to find balance. Whatever you have going on in your root chakra, it's your energetic foundation and everything else will build upon it. So if you have insomnia or sleep issues, if you have elimination issues when it pertains to digestion, if you have problems processing your emotions completely, if you hang on to traumas or memories in an unhealthy way, if you have PTSD, if you have unhealthy relationships with your family, if you have family mother wounds, father wounds, sibling wounds, if you have ancestral wounds, if you have wounds from birth traumas or womb traumas. There's a lot of things in the root chakra that can be affected. And we want to make sure that we're tending to that stuff right now. So it's not carrying over into the next year. This is a time to slay our demons. Mula Nakshatra is ruled by a form of Kali who rides this black crow kind of representing death and fighting the demons in our way. And a lot of times we have internal demons come up right now. You know, maybe we fight the need to always give once we receive, reciprocate, right? Like this is a time when we're receiving a lot and we feel the need to give a lot. Or maybe you're feeling pressured and obligated to give when financially you're taxed to do so. Maybe it's just with your energy, you're feeling the need to show up more than you actually want to. Those are all demons that you need to slay. And right now, this moon being in Mula Nakshatra brings in a little bit of a Kali energy to be like, no, I'm going to set my foot down. I'm going to, you know, 
not let all of these energetic vampires come in the way of my joy. It's also interesting because back on the Western side of the world, you know, Capricorn energy is a little selfish. All of the earth signs are. If you're a Virgo, if you are a Capricorn, if you are a Taurus, maybe you can just a little nod or shake if that's true in the comments but it's okay it's it's just part of who you are and it's a good thing capricorn energy is selfish because it doesn't let other energy impact what it believes or its truth remember it's very realistic it's very logical it doesn't let other things stand in the way of how it feels or or it thinks and so it's good to have a little bit of that you know stubborn selfish, independent energy right now and pay attention to where your energy is going. And if it's going somewhere that sucks the joy out of you to maybe say, no, I'm not going to do that and set that boundary. This is also a time to get in check with the demons that stand in your way of physical balance, energetic balance, health, wellness. You know, this is a time to celebrate. It's the holidays, but it's a time to also learn moderation. We tend to eat, drink, and be merry in excess. We tend to eat in excess right now. We tend to give of ourselves in excess. We tend to spend in excess. There's a lot of excess that tends to come up right now, and that creates a lot of imbalance, and that can be a bit of a demon. So this is a time that we're wanting to try to shift our habits, build strong foundations, build new roots for the next year. So it is a time to fight those demons of temptation, fight those demons of loneliness, fight those demons of addiction, fight those demons of dissociation and distraction, fight those demons of victimization, fight those demons of the ego that want to hold your frequency back into outdated 2020, 2022, 2021, all of the past that no longer serves you. It's time for a new you. It's time for a new version of your life. It's time for new habits. It's time for a new way that you give an exchange of your energy in a day-to-day -day basis. So yes, this is a time to get a little selfish and fight those demons and get a little selfish for your spiritual self and the person that you could become, the life that you could have if you just made a few little shifts along the way right? And told your ego to go take a step back and leave you alone for a while. Amy's on here and she says, so potential to be a pessimistic realist. <laughs> yes, says the, uh, says the Scorpio here. Pessimistic realist. It's true. Um, especially these times, right? It's easy to get down in these times right now because the realism can be a little dark. I always say that the earthly human experience, and by the way, this is another reason why we feel a little down around new moon portals. New moons make us feel Earth's gravity and make us feel our earthly human body. And when we really feel our earthly human body, it can be kind of a drag, like we can feel aches and pains and discomforts and things that we don't like in our body. We can also feel the drag of the human experience emotionally. I can't help today as it's so cold and also yesterday so cold, blizzard, wintry conditions where we are in the Midwest right now. I can't help but think about all of the homeless people here in our local community right now. Thankfully, the warming centers are open 24-7. Thankfully, other places are stepping up and opening up, and people are getting fed, and people are having beds to sleep in. But yesterday, as I was driving around finishing up my last-minute Christmas errands, I'm seeing lines of people at the shelters and the soup kitchens with their suitcases and their, you know, holy shoes and the best they can do to keep warm. And it's a fucking drag. I'm just going to say it. it's a fucking drag. It makes me sad, you know, and I, I think ever since I went to India five years ago and went and during the holiday season, I went during uh, November and December, I arrived back in the States just right before 
the holiday season, right before Christmas, I really got disgusted with materialism and consumerism because I was in a world of poverty, a country of poverty, and uh, living on very little and seeing what the American dollar could do in a country like that and then coming back to see what people spend their American dollar on. It's really kind of disgusting. So I have a bit of a drag feeling going on right now with this new moon um, just because stuff like that makes me sad. So, you know, you might be feeling some loneliness right now if you're, you know, if you have challenges with your family or you're not visiting family right now or you've lost loved ones recently maybe you're feeling depression because of that or sadness or loneliness there's a lot of things that can happen right now with this earthly human experience and also with this capricorn realist moon that can make us feel like we're in you know a bit of a downer phase okay but the best way to raise your frequency, little practical magic, something I wanted to share anyway, is to find joy, right? And this is where that selfishness comes back in. You've got to start building a foundation of joy. You've got to get that Capricorn mindset right now and set boundaries and say, no, I'm only going to be with what brings me joy. My computer's going to die. i got to stop it real quick. Yeah, don't die. Um... Even in Mula Nakshatra, you know, slaying the demons, the energetic vampires, the social commitments, the things that bring you down, the, 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 the energy suckers, you know, you've got to get rid of that stuff and bring in more joy. So we work right now with this new moon in Capricorn, with this moon in Mula Nakshatra, the root or foundational star, to build a life of joy to start co-creating a life of joy to set goals and intentions that bring in more joy what do you want to do what are your choices that you want more of that in 2023 more of that in your future and it starts right now with this new moon. So I encourage you, moon sisters and moon brothers, if you're listening to this transmission around the holiday weekend, if you're feeling obligated to bring your energy into places that suck the joy out of you, I hope you have permission with this moon to exit, to have an exit strategy. Or if you find yourself in conversations that do not serve a higher good, that do not serve a higher frequency, then you have the power to redirect the conversation or simply walk away from it. You always have the power to set these boundaries, to set these standards, to let people know where you stand as far as your social interactions and your energetic exchanges. Set it now. Set the standard now with this moon. You know, Capricorn energy is kind of a take no shits mentality. Take no, take no shit mentality. It's a good thing to have right now. It's a good thing to carry over into this next year. By the way, Capricorn being ruled by the planet of karma, Saturn, the energy we put out right now is the energy we will get back. Just don't be an asshole <laughs> if you're not into the conversation or you're not into the social scene and you want to leave, you can politely leave. You can politely change the conversation. You can politely exit. You can always go to the bathroom. That's what I tell people. You can always excuse yourself to the restroom. And then beyond that, if you need to leave a place, you can probably find some sort of excuse beyond there. And you can always blame the restroom. Man, something digestively is just not right. I think I'm going to call it an early night. Man, I'm dealing with a little heartburn right now, not feeling good. Kind of got a bit of a headache going on. Whatever you need to do, boo, come up with the with the excuse and, and, and get the heck out of that place that you need to get the heck out of. Okay. All right, one more thing about the cosmos. Well, two more things, really. One more thing, Mars. Mars is still retrograde. 
spinning retrograde, spinning backwards, going to be that way until January 12th. Mars is the planet of war, work, taking action. When it's spinning backwards, it's kind of the opposite of those things, okay? You might feel like you want to go to battle in a different way right now. Be careful about your exchanges with people. Be careful when you get tempered or impatient or stressed. When Mars is retrograde, we rethink our professional life. We think about what we want to do for a living. This might be a time where you redirect, especially with this new moon in Capricorn. Capricorn being an earth sign, things you do with your earthly human experience, like your job like your purpose, okay? Also, Capricorn energy is very good with money, very good with money. So this is a good time for you to think about, you know, how you want to bring more money into your life or how you want to bring money into your life. And you should be doing that, hopefully, with Mars retrograde in ways that actually bring you more joy. So if you've been seeking a new creative venture that might bring you financial gain, now's the time to start planning and taking actionable steps towards it. What else can I say about Mars retrograde? Not much from there. Just be careful about any battles that come about. Other cosmic shift, Mercury retrograde. We are already in the pre-shadow. It's why Tech is a little glitchy right now. It's why it's super freaking windy with this winter storm. Anytime we're gearing up for Mercury retrograde, usually the week before, the days before, and the day of, it's super windy or there's weird weather or weird storms. Here we are with a winter storm right before Mercury retro. Mercury is also a planet of trickery. Things are going to be tricky to navigate next weekend. I would not suggest travel. I would not suggest being out and about for New Year's Eve. I would not suggest getting into heated conversations or debates with anybody. I would not suggest buying technology with your Christmas money next weekend. Don't buy anything with communication like your phones, computers, uh, a new car. I mean, anything that's a big purchase, anything technological, you're going to want to avoid buying those things next weekend from January 29th, really until, or sorry, December 29th, until January 18th when Mercury goes direct. Also, just be careful of your health, your wellness. This is a time when we indulge. It's a time when we, you know, take in excess in food and drink and sugar and alcohol and we tend to party a little bit more or we stay up later and we don't get as much sleep or we're overstimulated and all those things can affect our health and wellness so as mercury goes retrograde it tends to affect the throat chakra and also the wellness center energetically in our body so you want to make sure that you're working towards your health now in preparation of that cosmic shift coming up I think that's it. I think that's all we need to talk about as far as the cosmos and astrology right now. I said I was going to keep it at an hour as close as I could. We're getting close. It's 9.03 <laughs> if you're live. So let's talk about practical magic for this moon. And then let's do our tarot reading. And then let's keep our guides and guardians around to help usher us and protect us and guide us into the new year. I won't release them tonight. I'll do that with the next full moon. And uh, yeah, that's it. So practical magic for this moon. It's all about manifestation. It's about what you want to create in 2023. This moon is asking you to decide to get real about what you want. And we can definitely make a vision board. We could definitely dream journal right now. We could definitely do a yoga nidra with a really strong sankalpa about what we want to co-create in our future. We can do a lot of different manifestation practices. But to save time and energy and keep it simple with this holiday weekend moon, to get yourself started right now, I want you to think of one word to represent your next year. One word that you want to represent all you want to manifest in the next year. 
if you need an example for this past year for 2022 i had two words i like two words i'm a libra i like things in twos my two words were success and completion success and completion why did i pick those words well number one completion I have a tendency to have my hands in 18 fires at once and never get my projects finished. ADHD, I get distracted. So for example, let's say I'm working on my taxes. I wanna get my taxes done. I've got four months worth of taxes to do. I need to hyper focus and sit down tomorrow or the next day whenever I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna get all four months. Who am I kidding? July, August, September, October, six months. So all six months, I need to sit down and do it like all at once or all in the same day. I don't need to do like two months and then the other two months like the next day and the other two months the next day because then I get distracted, I squirrel out, I go to another project and then that gets abandoned or like I get all stressed out and have to do it again later. It's just one example, but completion. When I start a task, I complete it all the way through. That helps me be more focused with my time and energy and get more done. That's certainly been a word I've worked with in 2022. Success. I've had a lot of trial and error. I've had a lot of um, tribulations and failures with my businesses, with my ideas, and with my fertility. And I just want to see more success with all of that. And that is something I'm still working on. But those are examples. And I'll just share with you that one of my words, one of my words, I am gonna have two words for 2023. One of my words is going to be balance. Because I would like to have more life work balance. I would like to have more time with my family, but also time to create with my business. I would like to have more energetic balance, feel more emotionally stable. I would like to have more physical balance. I would like to improve my yoga practice. There's a lot of ways I would like to be more balanced. I would like to spread my money out in a more balanced way. Um, I would like to balance my time with people that I love and, and with myself. Balance is my word. What is your word? Now, maybe you come up with it right now. Maybe it's, it's the thing that's lighting up in your head. And if it is, whatever comes up first should be the word, by the way. Don't fight it. Intuitively, that's what you need. But whatever that word is, so for me it's balance. I have a little sticky notepad here, I have a pen. I'm gonna write balance. That's it. And then I'm gonna write an affirmation for it because I'm gonna get practical with this, okay? I'm gonna say very easily, I am balanced and I'm gonna put that wherever I need to see it maybe in multiple copies to remind myself of my word every day because if I'm just thinking about that one word every day then I'm gonna do things around that word right if you need help by the way with your mantra let me know in the comments or if you need help with your word let me know in the comments even if it's the replay for example, if your word was completion, like mine was, you could say, I complete things, or I embrace completion. Maybe I finish what I start, you should change it up. If it's success, my other word for 2022, I am successful, easy peasy. So write down your word and write down an affirmation for your word that's very simple. Usually the I am or I have, you know, using the word I and as few words as possible. Make it simple, make it easy. Let that be your mantra for 2023. Put it on earthly sticky notes and put it all around your earthly home and earthly office and earthly car and all the earthly places that you see it so that you have a reminder. Let's do our tarot. I already pulled the cards. I'm gonna take a deep breath. 
I'm going to exhale and thank the cards for being in our circle tonight, the messages they have to bring to us. May they serve all who are turning a new leaf over in this new year. May they provide guidance with this new moon. We thank the cards for being in our circle tonight. I pulled a past, present, and future card as usual. And then I pulled a bonus card for the season of winter because we're so close into this brand new season. I felt like we needed a little bit of guidance for winter as well. So first I pulled three of pentacles. This is our past card. Anytime we have pentacles, we're reminded of fortune, luck, abundance, financial gain. When we have the number three, we're dealing with solar plexus energy, third energy center, meaning joy. So this means that maybe you had a very joyful financial year. Maybe you're reflecting on your financial gain or foundation or nest egg that you've built or whatever it is. Maybe it's the gifts that you've cultivated. Maybe it's the things that you've crafted. Maybe it's the things that you have received. The three of pentacles arrives as our past card as a reminder for us to look on our past and find what we are grateful for. And also find maybe a possible financial gain out of the things that bring us joy. This is kind of that Mula Nakshatra and Capricorn energy as well, right? And remember, Capricorn started two days ago. And Mars retrograde started some time ago. So we've been in an energy of reconsidering how we earn money and have financial support while also having more joy in our life. Notice this card, the orange and the yellow. Orange is sacral chakra, this creativity, intuitive gifts, and yellow is joy, professional life, work. So how can you blend the two? If you've had any ideas come up in 2022 or in the past, maybe it's even since yesterday, maybe it was earlier today, Whatever that little spark of fire, that little inspiration, you know, maybe it's time to put your energy towards more of that. Moving on to our present card, we have the star. This is a card of new beginnings. Last new moon of 2022, lunar cycle that ushers us into 2023. The planet of karma is ruling this moon. Everything we do now will have some sort of attraction back to us or reaction towards us or karmic, you know, lesson come through. It's time to ground in and build a new foundation. It's time to water the seeds of our dreams. Notice how she's pouring water into the river, but also pouring water onto the plant. She's watering her new intentions and dreams and letting go of what no longer serves. She's detaching, especially from what didn't work out this year, expectations that weren't met. Man, I feel like this is a personal life lesson for me right now. I feel like this card was pulled for me personally. Um, it's a time to let go of the dreams that did not work out and trust in the timing of things because we have this river of time. Water represents time. And all we can do is continue to pour our efforts and our emotions and our energy into the new seeds and dreams and intentions that we have and the new expectations that we have for our future year to come. For our future card, we have the King of Cups. The King of Cups is all about emotional management, emotional stability, rules his kingdom because he's been through a lot. So maybe you're 
going to rule your life with more ease and grace out of what you're going through right now, or maybe you're already ruling with more sovereignty out of the challenges and tribulations that you've been through. But one way or another, this feeling of power and being in control is coming. And with it is this sense of emotional stability, but also this sense to do emotional work. Winter is a time when we get a little down. Capricorn season is a time when we get more real about our demons <laughs> internally. Um, this is a time that we might want to do a lot of shadow work, but we can't always be doing the work on ourselves. The King of Cups is going to tell us that we can work on ourselves and work on ourselves and work on ourselves and do the personal development and do the shadow work and do the emotional alchemy. But if we're always doing it, we're not making room for the joy. We're not making room for the spontaneous. We're not making room for the other to be received. I have this mantra that if you're doing, you're not receiving. So we can't always be working on ourselves. Sometimes we have to take a little break and recharge and refuel. And I think that's what we're doing right now this weekend. I think this card comes to say, hey, Capricorn New Moon on December 23rd makes you want to ground in, makes you want to do hard work, makes you want to start working on your dreams right now. But what if you used this new moon and this holiday weekend, just the next two to three days, the dark portal of the moon, to rest to give that hard work a break, to let yourself just be an experience, have a royal party, tend to yourself, tend to your energy, tend to your dreams, and be with your kingdom of friends and family. And then you'll feel more recharged and joyful and, and fulfilled and ready to go after your work and your purpose and your dharma and your missions and your intentions and shift your habits and do all the hard work that you need to do to slay those demons. Take a little time to prepare though. Finally, I pulled a bonus card just to help guide us through winter. I got the six of swords. Swords are a time of cutting ties, detaching, severing, releasing. Six is the number of 2022, two plus two plus two. It's time to let go. It's time to let go of this year and what didn't work out. It's time to let go of what doesn't serve you anymore. Six is also a number of community and family. Do you need to cut cords? Do you need to put up your swords and set boundaries? Also notice that all of the swords are pointing down into the red square. This is root foundation, root chakra. This is that mula nakshatra telling us that whatever we do not set a boundary around will come through in our next year. We're building the foundation. We're setting standards right now. Whatever cords we don't cut, we're going to pull them into the next year. These swords almost remind me of kind of like a toiling of the soil. Like we're creating new rows to plant new seeds. So make sure that you are detaching and letting go of what you do not want to bring forward. The six of swords also represents hard work that still needs to be done. We've still got a lot of Capricorn season to go. We've still got winter ahead. There will probably be challenging times. There will probably be hard work ahead. We're moving into a seven year, two plus two plus three. A seven year is about evolution, but it's about going through the journey to get there. The seven deadly sins dragging through the seven days of the week to get to the weekend. Working through your seven chakras and learning about all of them to find true emotional balance. 
there is still hard work to do. Get ready for it. The Six of Swords tells you that you're capable of doing the work, but you've got to prepare. This is what I have for you tonight. This tarot reading, these insights on Capricorn, Mars, Mula Nakshatra, the moon, the new year to come, Mercury retrograde, everything going on. A little practical magic to help you start manifesting right now. Remember, don't wait until next weekend. Next weekend, you might struggle to find the word. This communication gets weird. Your throat chakra, your honesty sector gets a little weird during Mercury retrograde. You won't be as honest with yourself. Do it now with this Capricorn energy that says get real, get honest. Don't sugarcoat it. I hope that tonight's circle has served you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me again. I know your time is valuable right now during the holiday season. I do appreciate you setting aside your time to spend with me. By the way, this is a great time to really reflect back on this past year and look back at your accomplishments, your achievements. I have to mention, I was looking back at last year's New Moon in Capricorn email that I sent out, and it went out to 23 people. Shout out if you were on that OG list of 23 people last year. One year later, guess how many people I sent my New Moon Musings e-newsletter out to you today. 389. 389. Anything can happen if you put your mind to it. Three years ago, pre-pandemic, pre-COVID, I didn't even have an email list. I wasn't even sending a moon newsletter. Everything can change in a very, very short amount of time, but you have to take the baby steps and the work to get there. You have to arrange your energy accordingly to get there. You have to make a plan and you have to stick to it. And you have to get real with yourself when you need to in order to make shift and change. Start with this new moon in Capricorn. Start using the new moon to manifest. Start using the new moon to work towards your goals and intentions and to change and to shift and evolve. Let it start right here with this last lunar cycle and first lunar cycle of 2022 and 2023. Our next moon circle will be in the new year. On Thursday, January 5th, we will be meeting again here on Instagram. We'll be meeting to celebrate the full moon in Cancer. And we can't meet on Friday. We're meeting on Thursday because I have a yoga rave. (laughs) I'm leading a three-hour full moon yoga rave on Friday the 6th. So if you're local to Burlington... That's at Cornerstone, Iowa, and you can get tickets right now, or you can pop in at the door. It's going to be a good time, but you can also just circle up with me here on Thursday on the 5th at 8 p.m. Central Time to celebrate the full moon in Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I am sending you all the holiday blessings of joy with this new moon in Capricorn. Until we meet again, may we all be happy. May we all be healthy. May we all feel safe and at peace. And we are, may we all feel loved, be loved, and love one another. And so it is, and so it is, and so it is. Blessed be. Namaste. Namaste.